greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, what a privilege to uh, come into God's presence. Uh, before we go into the Word of God, let's uh, bow down our heads and pray, and then we will go. <coughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you this morning. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your leading. We thank you, Lord, that you brought us here on a Sunday morning. Lord, what a glorious thing, Lord, to be in your presence. There's no place that we'd be in this earth, Lord, than to be in your presence. Lord, we commit this time into your hands. Lord, we commit our bodies, Lord, our emotions, our will, our, our mind, our everything, Lord, into your hands. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you take it as a worship, Lord, that we offer ourselves as living sacrifices, which is the true and reasonable worship, Lord. So, Lord, this time, Lord, we give ourselves unto you. We have not come here with our own agenda. Lord, we want you to speak to us. We want you to lead us. We want you to just carry us, Lord, in times of trouble. We come, we come and we just give you glory and honor and praise unto your name. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. So we've been talking about, uh, there's one side, you know, your belief in Christ. And there's another side, which is changed life, right? Belief and changed life. You know, I've seen sometimes, you know, like some Christians, they say believe, they believe God, but they are like really nasty people. You don't want to be friends with them, you know, because like they are so harsh and like, you know, they are, they are sometimes, you know, they are rude and they, they, they are manipulating and all that. So I always like wonder like, okay, you, Christian beliefs change life. Christian beliefs change life. So yes, Christian beliefs are there, but change life is not yet there. So what, what is that thing that connects that from my belief? Yeah, I say I believe in Jesus because I believe in Jesus. There are certain changes in my life. Right? What is that, that bridge that connects belief and changed hearts? What is that bridge that connects? The first thing we saw last week was personal worship. You know, a time of personal worship. You know, how we worship God, you know, with all our emotions and mind and will. We offer ourselves completely. You know, there are certain things that we offer ourselves in our daily lives. You know, like I said, use the example of the cricket match. When you go to the cricket match, you know, your body, your will and your mind, everything is engaged. You know, you're watching like, you know, when the, when the ball is hit, like, you know, you're clapping and you're responding to what's happening in the stadium. So because your whole body and your mind and emotions are all engaged, you know, you're emotional. You, you, when the wicket goes down, you feel sad. When the batsman hits a six, you know, you're happy. So the same way, worship also. You know, when we come to God... It's not a passive thing. It's, a, it's our hearts are awakened. Maybe physically, you might like to worship like, you know, very quietly. You might like to uh, just fold your hands or probably not raise your hands. But your heart is awakened. Your heart is like awakened because like you're, you're rejoicing in the heart. You know, sometimes, you know, you can physically raise your hands also. You know, that, that is not at all, you know, it's like, you know, some two people worshipping next to each other. One person might be so animated, you know, when they are worshipping God. Another person will be very quiet about it doesn't matter. There are different types of churches for different types of people. You know, there are certain churches that are very quiet. Like, you know, they, they maintain the order. They like, you know, they're like, okay, God's presence is here and we are standing in front of God and let our attention and focus be on God. There are some churches, you know, where like, you know, they want to um, just be very animated. Like, you know, they want to just uh, use their hands and they want to dance and do that. You know, they, different types of worship, you know. God loves variety. You know, God, look at each one of you here. You know, is everybody the same? Just look at anybody here, like, we're all different, right? And so, um, praise the Lord for, for different types of churches and different types of worship, you know, different types of praising, you know, but it all has to start from the heart, right? So that is our number one, you know, so, so I, I request you to have, uh, this is a practice, right? It's a Christian spiritual disciplines. That means it's a practice that we do every day. That is what makes us. Right. So when I was before I came to committed to Jesus Christ, I used to find uh, movie songs very addictive. Like, you know, they were like, wow, man, what a music! Like, you know, like, wow, what a great artist! Like, you know, what beautiful lyrics and all that. Then I, after I started to come to God, there are certain types of music I stopped to listen because there was something more attractive now than the cinema music, because God's music playing, I believe. Is for who? Is for you and me, right? It's for you and me. That's the whole purpose of Jesus praying. So every time, you know, like Mark chapter 1 verse 35. Mark's works one, chapter 1 verse 20, 35 it says, Early in the morning, Jesus got up, 
He got up from his bed, he went out of the house, went to a quiet place so that he can pray. It's just like an important verse, like, you know, early in the morning, he first gets up and then he got out of the bed, you know, because you know what happens if you stay in the bed and pray. And then he went out of the house because you know what happens, you know, when you, are, when you have a small house and like there are many people there. And then he went out not for morning walk or sightseeing, he went to pray. Very focused, very intentional, very planned. You know, that's the meticulous planning that Jesus had for prayer. Right? And so the whole Bible, like, you know, whenever, whenever you see Jesus praying, it is for you and for me. In fact, like Jesus, one of the times, right, when Lazarus is there, uh, this is how Jesus prays. Like literally, you know, this is how Jesus prays. He says, Lord, thank you that you always hear what I say. And I'm praying now loudly so that the people around me can hear that you are God. Right? So, so that's the whole point, right? So Jesus always praying so that he can be an example for you and for me. So today my example, your example is Jesus. That we want to be followers, you know, the author and finisher of our faith. We keep our eyes on Jesus, you know, just taking away all sins and hindrances that entangle us and we run the race because he's the author and finisher of our faith. Right? So I want to start with Jesus. So there are many verses, you know, I don't have because Jesus prayed everywhere. Like, you know, before the miracle, after the miracle, before choosing disciples, on the cross, you know, uh, in front of the tomb, you know, and, and uh, he was teaching his disciples to pray. He, uh, he, before chasing demons, he's praying, you know, he's praying with tears and he's crying out and he, he's praying with tears. Yes, uh, Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. And then he's praying when he's baptized, you know, he's praying. In the, in the desert, he's praying. In the, um, uh, before he's giving the Sermon on the Mount, he's, he's praying. He's always praying. And the finally, you know, he also ended his life on this earth, on the cross, praying. Right? Into your hands, Father, I give my spirit. So always praying, like, you know, like, pray, pray, pray. Okay, so now, <laughs> new people are like, brother, you know, I've prayed. You know, I'm like, whenever I go to pray, I get sleepy. I get other thoughts, my mind starts to wander, I, I, I start to, you know, uh, think about my work, I start to think about my uh, tasks for the day, and so on. So it's a very real struggle. So that's why I said in this, in this passage that we read this morning, there are two types of people. One is praying Jesus. Another one is what? Sleeping Peter. Praying Jesus and sleeping Peter. What, what amazing thing, right? You know, God has... The word is for everybody. You know, you could be a prayer person and you could read this passage and say, wow, man, I want to pray like Jesus. I want to be growing in my prayer life. I want to be learning more about prayer. And, you know, you people who have no hope, you know, who are like Peter, you know, sleeping. And Jesus is asking, hey, are Baba, come with me for one hour, Jesus is asking. Like, you know, he's tired with Peter. He's like, come on, Peter. Like, you know, what's up with you? Like, you know, like I told you to help me. I am troubled. I am grieved. I want you to also support me in prayer. And here I come expecting some support and all I'm hearing is snoring, you know. And so, very, very, Bible is very real for each one of us and it speaks to each one of you wherever you are in your prayer life. You know, don't feel ashamed. You know, don't, I'm not here today morning to say like, you know, Yo, you got to pray like this and if you don't pray like this, you're not going to get that. No, prayer is not that. It's something more, hundred times more glorious than uh, uh, that, that, you know, like, like, you know, trying to, like, like a method of prayer, like you do this, you will get this, you know, it's not that. So first, before I say what is prayer, let's look at what is not prayer, right? You know, because that's the first thing we want to understand what is, what is not prayer. And then we will go into what is prayer. And then we will look at some uh, struggles that we each one of us have, you know, when it comes to our prayer life, right? And again, I'm talking about uh, personal prayer life, right? Wrong ideas about prayer. Okay, wrong ideas. Um, this is what I hear from people, you know. So, so I, I, it's, it's good to, you know, just, just uh, get what's, uh, just what people tell. It's like, you know, some people say, prayer is like casting a net and hope you catch a fish. No, that's not prayer. It's like, you know, like, oh man, I, uh, it's like fishing, like, you know, like, oh, I hope I put here, you know, like, and I hope I catch a fish. No, it's, it's not that. It's not like that. Prayer is something more. I'll tell you why. Uh, but we are looking at just a list of what is not prayer. Second thing is, prayer is not a technique. It's like, you know, some people ask me, brother, what are the right words to say? How to start a prayer? How to end a prayer? And what are the power words? You know, what are the power words I need to use? You know, so that my answer will come immediately. 
Yes, I've been praying for this house. I'm praying for this car. I've been praying for a promotion. Where should I go? What word should I use so that God will be like, you know, like he'll be tempted to come and like help me. Oh man, he used that word. Oh no, granted. It's like that. No, it's not like that. Prayer is not a technique. Prayer is not a method to be, to be uh, you know, to be figured out. And I'll tell you what prayer is. You know, I want to get to there, but I want to tell all the wrong misconceptions about prayer and then go into prayer. And then another thing is, uh, prayer is not trying to convince God. That's another thing you should understand. Prayer is not trying to convince God. Some of the times, you know, some prayers, you know, I've prayed that prayer. It's like, Lord, I've been going to church, I've been reading and reading the Bible and I've been a good boy. So I need seat in this college. I need to get entrance into this college. Talking about entrance, you know, this week, I've been getting a lot of calls from our church members, like, you know, they've got results of their 12th and so on. So they are all trying to figure out which college to go, which course to take, you know, which is bad, which is good and all that. So I prayed that prayer. It's like, you know, I've been a good boy, so give me good things. Oh Lord, I've been a bad boy. So I, 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 I'm, I, I'm upset, you know, I, I don't know what to do. You know, so that's not that. Prayer is not trying to convince God about anything. The Bible says that Jesus himself said that, you know, even before you ask, your heavenly father knows what you're asking. Now that doesn't mean we don't need to pray. Some people use that one verse and they say, oh my God knows already, so why should I pray? That is completely misguided because that is like using God's word to twist God's word for your own advantage, right? So that is, but again, the reality is God knows what my need is, right? And you might say, brother, then why should we pray? Let's listen on continuously, right? And then some people will say, God will only hear the pastor's prayer. Powerful prayer, pastor. And if I go to that mountain and pray, and that pastor prays for me, you know, that's very powerful. And usually, you know, one lakh people will go. Out of that, you know, God's will, you know, 100 people probably or 1000 people received the thing and they go and testify. I went, I went and did this and I got this. You know, so it's a lot of marketing involved in that. So, so please be sure that just as you are a child of God, the pastor also is a child of God, right? So, so God is not saying like, you come and ask me, do you like your, which daughter do you like? It's like asking which eye do you like? <laughs> Obviously you like both the eyes. You, know, you want to have both the eyes. So that's the thing, the pastor praying or the, or the believer praying, it's all the same. But sometimes, you know, uh, TV evangelists or some, some type of things, they have created the uh, type of uh, uh, thing where like, you know, if, if you come and pray with me, things will happen, the breakthrough will happen, right? That is, that might be true in some of the cases, but it's not always true when it comes to your personal prayer life. Again, I'm talking about your personal prayer life. So what happens, you know, people, they uh, don't have a personal prayer life. In fact, like, you know, I've seen, uh, brothers say, oh, my wife is a prayer warrior. Or they will say, my husband is a prayer warrior. Or, you know, my daughter is praying for me. Or someone is praying for me. Again, I'll tell you, you cannot outsource prayer. You cannot outsource prayer. You know, can I ask one of the brother here to eat for me, eat breakfast for me? No. And, and I need to eat it so I can get the strength that comes from the breakfast, from the food that I eat. So, I don't want to outsource my prayer. Uh, Yes, prayer is helpful. Your mother's prayer, your father's prayer has been impactful in your life. But as you walk with God, as you start walking with God, you want to grow in your prayer life. You don't want to depend on your mother's prayer and your father's prayer. Because, you know, God's calling you to prayer. And I want you to turn to Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Is This is an amazing verse. You know, I could preach another sermon on another day just on this one verse. They, some people say this is the telephone number to God. When I was in Sunday school, my Sunday school teacher told this. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. It says, oh, it says call. That's why they said, okay. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and incomprehensible things that you do not know or great and wondrous things you do not know. So God's saying, call to me. And and where is this person when he was writing this, this verse? This is Jeremiah. He is in a prison. He is in a prison when he wrote this point. When Paul writes, pray in the spirit always, where was he? 
he was in the, again in the prison. He was again in a damp, dark prison. And they are writing what God's telling them, which is, call to me and I will answer and I will show you great and wondrous things that you don't know yet. So that is, that is God's heart for you and for me. So how can I outsource it to someone? Right? Like for example, now the teaching of God's word is what God's laid in my heart to share here. But what's a, even more better than this, you know, is God wanting to speak to you directly. And then we will look at the next message, you know, in the series, which is pray, reading God's word and meditating on God's word, which is the next one. But today, let's stick to prayer. And then some people say, I have prayed so much. It's called merit prayer. Like, you know, like I prayed so much. I prayed for this thing for so long. And the answer is not coming. Why is there a delay? And so we get tired of it and we stop praying for it. We stop praying after a point, after a few months or a few years or something. Um, I think I've sh shared this before. George Mueller, he was a man of prayer. He prayed for three people in his life to be saved. You know, there are many people who were touched by his life, but specifically he writes in his biography that he prayed for three people and that one person got saved 20 years after his prayer. Another person got saved one year before the death of George Mueller. And the third person got saved after the death of George Mueller, you know, is what the author, you know, like the, the biography author wrote. You know, so there are times, you know, where we don't know the answers. So when I talk about prayer today here, I am not talking about as if I know all the answers about prayer. Because we don't want to say or come across like that we have figured out the key to prayer. That we have unlocked the mystery of prayer. No. So what is prayer then? So we've seen all the wrong ways, you know, we look at and like, you know, like uh, some people say, what if I say the wrong words? Oh, what if I say the wrong word? Oh, did I say the wrong word? You know, one of the things that used to make me sweat was like, you know, sometimes when my dad used to take me and say, okay, Uldri, you pray, he'll say. And I'll be like sweating like anything because I'm scared because like, what will people think about my prayer? Like, you know, when I pray, like they might laugh at me and I might stumble. I might say the wrong words. I don't know. So that used to really bother me. So when it comes to prayer time, no, I will just escape from the room because my dad should not find me. Because if he finds me only, he will tell me to pray. So I'll just like, just scoot out of the room. You know, so, so that is also, there's a fear also to that. You know, fear of, you know, whether will I pray, will I, will I stammer, you know, will I stumble and all that. So God wants to, you to know today what is true prayer, right? So that you can have a time of uh, glorious personal prayer with the Lord. Right? So what is prayer? Prayer, you know, to be, uh, to put it in two short sentences is, prayer is talking to God, prayer is being in God's presence. Two things. Very simple, right? So this is again for new uh, people who have not started to pray. Why should I pray to God? I am talking to God and I am in God's presence when I am praying. Very, very important. And you might say, brother, are you not in God's presence like, other than prayer time. Yes, absolutely. You are in presence. Where can I go from your presence, O Lord? Even if I go to the bottom of the ocean, you are there. And I go to the top of the mountain, you are there. I cannot go from God's presence. But in prayer, you know, I am connected to God. So like, for example, when I'm talking to someone, I want to call someone, I call someone, right? I, I take up the phone and I call them. I have the desire to talk to that person. So when I call that person, so I call that person for a purpose and I call them and I talk to them and I talk to them for 20 seconds and then they talk to me for 20 seconds, 20 seconds, 20 seconds, 20 seconds. You know, so like, you know, we just, we have, a, we are having a conversation and, and sometimes, you know, there are people who are broken hearted on the phone. There was this person, you know, I was talking to and this sister has going through some family problem, 45 minutes straight, only she was talking. She was weeping the whole time, 45 minutes. And I'm trying to say, sister, and then she starts to say something, and sister, and so, so she's praying. Even that is prayer. It's fine. It's fine. There are times in our life where we are just pouring our heart out before God. It is okay. When we are only talking, we are, we are not even receiving something that time. You know, so this is a physical activity, right? This is a physical activity. Like you calling someone on the phone and you get a response from them and then you listen to them and then you respond back to them and then you listen to them and respond back to them. This is a physical activity. But I'm telling you, dear brothers and sisters, prayer 
benefits your spirit because it's a spiritual activity. That's the thing you have to understand. Don't compare prayer to anything else in your life because there is no comparison. That's the problem. We try to compare prayer with something like, like talking on the phone. Oh, I've called this uh, landlord. Sir, please give me the house for rent. You know, like, no, please reduce the rent by 1000 rupees. Please, sir. Please, sir. Please, sir. You called him five times, six times and finally says, okay, fine. You know, I'll give you that house for rent and at a lower cost. And you see, okay, I pleaded with this person. I pleaded with this person six times and he responded on the sixth time saying, okay, I know you're struggling with financially. You take this house for lower rent. But that cannot be compared to prayer. Prayer is what? Prayer is first thing, knowing who I am. I am, a, I am made in the image of God. I am, a, I am a spiritual being first. Because my body, the, the thing that you're seeing today, the person that you're seeing today is not going to be there you know, after a point, you know, after I don't know how many years. But my spirit is the most important thing. And the spirit is what's going to live on. When God said, let us make man in our image, that means God said, let's make us as a spiritual being. Let's make man as a spiritual being. So that we can have what? Intimacy and connection with them. So prayer is connection. Prayer is intimacy with God. Prayer is God talking to you and you talking to him. How brother? You know, so is it through the words that come out of my mouth? No. Sometimes, you know, it's not the length of the prayer, it's the weight of the prayer. How heavy the prayer is just by one word you say to God. Lord, you just say. And that is enough. Because God knows the groaning of your heart. It's not how long you pray, it is how heavy your prayer is. Because it comes from the heart. Because it's your spirit talking to God's spirit. It's a spiritual activity. So that's why, you know, I'm trying to find many examples for how to compare prayer. In fact, I will fail repeatedly. And the miserable example I gave is the example of the phone. And, and that is the thing. So prayer is a spiritual activity. And your spirit is connected to God's spirit. 1 Corinthians 6.17 So here Paul's talking about when the body gets connected with two people, right? You know, like, like adultery, you know, in the case of adultery. And in that context, he's talking, but he's talking about another thing, about what makes Christians special. It says, but anyone joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Amen? That is prayer. So when we are joined to the Lord, when my spirit is connected to God's spirit, and that is the God's own purpose, God's plan is that sin took away that connection. Sin and the world and uh, Satan took away that connection. So the connectivity is lost. But now through prayer, you know, I'm connected to, my spirit is connected to God's spirit. I go in, in my spirit, like, you know, I, I go with expectation. Some people say, Anna, prayer is boring. Prayer makes me sleepy. And all that. Yes, I understand. It's fine. It's fine. It is boring. It is sleepy. When you look at it as a physical activity, if you look at prayer as a spiritual activity where God is blessing your spirit, where God is speaking to your spirit, where God wants to touch your spirit, where God is showing you great and wondrous things that you don't know, that is prayer. That's why Jeremiah says, call unto me and I will answer and I will do what? I will show you. But first for that, you need to call unto him. You need to call him and you go there and then God starts to show you many things about life. God starts to show you many things about your personality, about who you are, about people, about, about things, about what life is, about what world is. And God's starting to show you. So that is spiritual thing. So prayer is a spiritual activity that starts with our spirit, like, you know, where, where our spirit is connected with that. So, so we are connected. And then second thing, like I said earlier, little bit I touched upon is talking to your daddy, talking to your dad. Like, you know, like some people ask me, brother, how should I pray? I say, I ask them, have you talked to your dad before? So, yeah. Do you go to your dad? My dear dad, you know, in your name, I ask and all that. No, you just go to your dad. That's your normal earthly dad. But now you've been prayer, you're go having a respect. You're having a heavenly respect. So when people came and asked Jesus, Lord, how should we pray? Jesus, first he said, 
our father in heaven what did he say father the first word is our father my father who is in heaven so prayer is a relationship prayer is an intimate relationship where you are talking to your dad you are talking to your heavenly dad who created you how did he become your dad because you believed in the lord jesus christ the moment you believe in the lord jesus christ you are a children of god you are a child of god so you have this right to go to father as a father you know you to, you have the right to go to the god as father today many people are scared of god they are like oh oh god is punishing me god is threatening me so that is for people who don't look at god as their father there is that fear concept no but now i fear god i fear god when i go to god in prayer i go with the holy fear of god i say lord i come before you yes you are the god of gods and lord of all lords and king of kings and yet you are my heavenly father and that's the thing so so we are having our heavenly father look at how jesus is talking about prayer is my heavenly father my daddy there is that possessiveness is like my dad our heavenly father hallowed be your name see now then comes respect my heavenly father my daddy you are so holy and awesome and wonderful that's what it means so when you go to your prayer chamber or even you start to pray to god that is what's happening dear brothers and sisters your spirit is awakened to what god wants to say to you you are you are like this you are, you are like 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 you know like uh, sorry for the bad example again you are like you know going into like instagram reels like just like look at your your brain is like all excited heightened because like you're going that red mark is showing on instagram or or facebook or whatsapp like oh you're going to open oh i'm opening with expectation oh what i'm going to see pictures and this the same thing spiritually you're growing you're going with expectation oh what's god going to show me today how god's going to use me today how god's going to create opportunities for me today how god is going to use me as this instrument today and so and so when we come to god you know we come as we come to our father's presence and prayer is being in father's presence and then again you know prayer is like you know like like it's very useful like you know like there are many things that i want to talk about prayer but we don't have time and also prayer is also another thing is like you know also resisting the enemy like we saw you know the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak any time you know you are praying you are you someone hates when you pray is the enemy hates it when you pray enemy does not like you to pray he will create problems he will create disturbances and everything to stop you from praying that's the activity he knows that you are being connected to your heavenly father and he will do anything possible to create that distraction that discouragement that anger that hatred that neglect of prayer he will do that and and like you know when when i've seen this so many times in my life like you you want to pray you have a desire to pray because when you become a child of god you are like hungry you are like hungry to feed not hungry for biryani but hungry for god's presence you are hungry for god's presence and you know that when i go uh, read bible i am a different person when i am praying i am different person when i am hearing god's word i am a different person because you know at that moment someone is feeding you the holy spirit is feeding you you feel encouraged you feel emboldened you are you are you are comforted you are you are you are you are like you know you 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 start to have clarity in your mind and everything and then when you go out into the world if enemy is trying to distract you because you made a decision to pray you made a decision okay i am going to pray and i am going to pour my heart before god i am going to tell all my difficulty to god prayer is not my last resort prayer is my first resort sometimes prayer is the last resort like you know you try this you try that you tried this you know I, for me prayer has been the last to last 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 very last resort everything i'm telling is you know from my life life experience you know i've read so many books on prayer didn't help me with prayer i have talked to many people about prayer didn't help me in my prayer life it helped me a little bit to encourage but you know i wanted to pray i had a desire to pray but i was unable to pray and i i used to get this distractions easy distractions from here here and then getting upset over some things you know you wake up in the morning you want to pray you want to spend time in god's presence and then 
something comes up and it blows up the whole day or you know you go to bed late and you wake up at 11 o'clock or <laughs> 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock and then you're like oh running running quickly you know get ready let me run out of the door because i'm getting late for my bus or getting late for my school or college and so that's the thing dear brothers sisters we want to we are suffering because there is no prayer in our life in fact the bible says in james chapter 5 anyone who is suffering let him what let him pray very simple if you are suffering you pray very i love that straight like you know james you know when he writes he is very to the point like you know when i go to heaven i want to go and talk to him because uh, he'll be like very to the point like you know i don't have time like he's like instagram reels you know like tell me everything in 6 seconds and that's james for you if you are suffering he says pray if anybody is sick lay hands on them that's all like you know he he has this thing and he also has answers you know i will tell you why prayer is not answered you know i will come back to that later so prayer is attacking the enemy's fort resistance to the enemy resist satan and he will what from you he will flee from you but resistance i need to resist whatever it comes oh the resistance to answer my friend's phone call the resistance like you know i need to resist that phone call i need to resist these people i need to resist this type of behavior i need to resist this type of character that is that is coming and influencing my spirit i will not allow anything to come and touch my spirit like you know if you if you are like if you know something is bitter you will not drink because you don't want that bitterness to taste in your in your tongue because you know when something is bitter you taste it, it it's going to create bad feelings in your body the same way why should i allow bad things you know to touch my mind and my spirit i don't want that and some of you you know might be here because like you know you've been repeatedly assaulted by some sins some sins have come and taken over your life and like you know there are something sometimes called remaining sin or besetting sin or like you know like like um, recurring sin keeps occurring happens often like you know you you keep falling in that temptation repeatedly i'm telling you dear brothers and sisters what did jesus say in matthew chapter 26 pray that you will not enter into what temptation again you see if you are being beset by recurring sins god says jesus says pray that you will not enter itself into that temptation you will not go there you will not go to that friends you will not go to that type of lifestyle because it's given me strength now there were times you know where i was trying to avoid bad habits just by my mind like my strength of my mind it's like okay i make a decision today you know i will not go hang out with those type of people i will not watch those type of stuff i used to make up my mind you know like yeah god's given us willpower you know so we do that but it was not enough in for certain sins for certain sins it was not enough for certain temptations it was not enough and then one day this was just just like you know was like was like light to me it said pray that you will not enter into temptation so jesus is saying when you pray you have strength to say no to temptation you have strength to say no and when you say no satan is ashamed Satan is ashamed because you are resisting Satan and he will run from you. And slowly but surely, you are able to overcome that, whatever that recurring aspect in your life is, whatever it is. So, so prayer is also thing, you know, it's like resisting the enemy. Okay? But another important thing is, you know, I will use this as an example, you know, I'll tell you. There are different types of prayer in the Bible. So when people say, you have to pray like this, watch out, you know, because it is not true. There are different types of prayer. I, I, there are some types of prayer, you know, like, like Hannah's prayer. Very intimate, you know, pouring out her heart before God. And she is praying and like, you know, she's, she's so upset. And so there's this, that, that type of pouring her heart out to God. And sometimes, you know, you hear about David's prayer. David's prayer is almost like a, like, like, you know, like two lovers talking to each other, you know, in a park. I don't want you to go and listen. But like when two lovers are talking in the park, they are like, you know, like they're like, oh, you're so beautiful. And like, you know, oh, yeah, you're more beautiful. Oh, no, no, you're more, more beautiful. No, it's like that. You know, it's like intimacy. You know, like that is David's type of prayer. You know, some prayers of David. And there are some types of prayer where like, you know, you go before a king. Like, you know, you go before a king as you're pleading before the king. Like Daniel's prayer. It's like, you know, you go before the king and you're like, you know, king, I'm coming before you. And Nehemiah's prayer. 
like you know he's praying and he's uh, uh, you know he's going before god of heaven and earth you know it's like and there are some prayers which is like a boxing match wrestling match it's like you know you are you are wrestling with god in prayer lord lord i need you lord i need you in this area of my life i need you to break through lord i need your strength in this area i so i'm so weak here i need your strength lord it's like jacob praying you know wrestling with god so there are different types of prayer you know so we need to understand that but again outcomes of prayer right outcomes of prayer different outcomes of prayer also like for example jehoshaphat's prayer he said lord we need victory and tomorrow he goes into the battlefield and he stands there and he starts praying and behold god does the battle for him and they have victory wow won't all prayers be like that you know if we can go and like pray and say oh this is how you have to pray and like you know and if you pray like this you know this will happen many people have tried to write prayer books you know that's the, that's why i avoid prayer books that come as like a formula prayer books you know you you need to completely avoid them you need to know what christian books to read and what christian books not to read there are many books today you go to a christian bookshop and you say there will be many books that says you know how to get rid of this how to become a better person how to become a better version how to win in life how to uh, get your prayers answered how to get power in this so so that this you know it's almost like a formula and it's like when i look at that i i'm scared of those books i'm scared for those writers of those books because how can you bring god into a formula how can you bring god into a box because look at prayer josephus prayer some people have said oh you need to pray like josephus you know because look at him he prayed and he got the result okay come on let's analyze jehoshaphat's prayer what we should do like you know oh, he prayed like this so if we pray like this we will get the answer tomorrow now, again prayer is not twisting god's arm prayer is conforming myself to god's plan okay i'll come to that little bit and then sometimes you pray and you wait that's an outcome abraham he waited he prayed he had a desire but there was a waiting time So sometimes when you pray, there is going to be a waiting time. So sometimes God saying, "Yes, my dear child, you are praying to me, but you are waiting." You might say, "Brother, waiting for what?" You might say, "You know, again, I'll come back to that question." Sometimes prayer is God is preparing you, like Joseph. He prayed, he shouted from the pit, "Lord, save me, Lord! Hey, don't take me to the Egyptians!" He's crying from the pit, and his prayer is not answered, and he's sitting in the prison. Prayer is not answered. and is trusting people prayer is not answered but what was god doing the whole time prayer and preparing god was preparing him while he was praying so that god can give him something greater in his life so prayer can be preparing time prayer can be waiting time and there's also sometimes you know god says pray and do pray and do like for example nehemiah he was praying lord these people are coming and discouraging us when we are trying to do this good work they are discouraging us You know what Nehemiah said? There are certain people who are stationed to build. There are certain people who are stationed to do, defend. You know, so it's praying and doing. Sometimes you know God. Some people will wait till like you know like oh till I do like this I will not do anything for God. But God will say no. You you pray and do certain things. And if it's in your strength, you do it because you are anyway doing it by prayer. So prayer and waiting, prayer and preparing, prayer and doing. Sometimes. like you know for example yesterday i think someone posted on the group in our whatsapp group they said um um paul you know he prayed for his thorn to be removed what did god say did he answer that prayer no he said i will give you grace sometimes we pray for this god will give us some other answer and we should accept that and like you go through suffering and and grief and sorrow and god will give you grace and strength to handle that suffering grief and sorrow and that's the thing that's what prayer does and all these glorious benefits of prayer now you might say brother uh, delays in prayer why are there delays in prayer for example this lady you know and as praying year after year she comes lord i need a child i need a child and um, all she needs is a child she goes to her husband and husband says like you know yes you know i love you and all that but still she's not happy with that answer yes you love me but i still need a child and she she keeps going and then um one year she says lord uh, let's turn there first samuel first samuel chapter 1 <clears throat> verse 11 you know it's i'm not saying i'm my point is not to make a wow here you know it's not like i'm not bringing god down to a formula she says 
Lord of Armies, verse chapter 1, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. If you will take notice of your servant's affliction, remember and not forgive me and give your servant a son, I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and his hair will not be cut. So she is saying, Lord, till now she was praying for a baby and now she is praying for a baby for God, not for her. So now suddenly her prayers changed into a baby for God, not for me. And so, sometimes, you know, God's timing is different from our timing. And we have to understand that. God's timing is different from our timing. And we, we think like, you know, I have prayed, I have gone to this fasting prayer, I have done 21, 20, 21 day fast and this will happen. You know, God's timing is completely different. You know why God's timing was different in this case? Because God, like, you know, Hannah said, Lord, I need a child. Hannah needed a child. What did God need? God needed a prophet. God needed a prophet. Hannah needed a child. And the right time came when Eli's sons were not doing God's will. When Eli's sons were not doing God's will, God had to raise a new baby as a prophet. Who did he raise up? He raised up Samuel. So see the timing when Hannah's prayer started to align with God's timing and plan, the prayer is answered. Did you get the, did you get the point? You know, so prayer is when my, my prayer is aligned with God's plan and timing, the prayer is answered. So that is prayer, dear brothers and sisters. We have to un understand this. That's why, that's why in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, it says, if you ask anything according to his will, A.W. Tozer, a great man of prayer. I love his books. And he says, you know, he wrote a book on prayer. And in the end, he said, end every prayer with Lord according to your will. How did Jesus pray? Lord, not my will, but whose will? Your will. Your agenda be done in my life. And that's the thing. When we go in prayer, we go with the openness that Lord, your agenda, your timing, your wisdom, your answer in your time. And that's the thing. And when we go to God in prayer, I'm opening myself up to be an instrument of God. That is prayer. Like when Hannah went there to pray, this time she opened herself and saying, Lord, your child is yours. It's yours. And so God used Hannah's body as an instrument to bring the prophet for the nation of Israel. Right? So, so, so that is the thing. So aligning myself with God's interests, that is prayer. So most of the time when you and I are praying, as we grow in our prayer life, we are like, Lord, what is it? How do you want me, want to use me today? How do you want to work through me today? I am open. That is prayer. <laughs> prayer is saying to God, I am open, Lord. I am open. Use me today. How you want me to use today? Not saying, Lord, you give me this type of ministry. Lord, you give me this type of comfort. You do this, then I will do that. If you give this, if I'll do that. No, those are ungodly people who are unbelievers who don't know the heart of God who pray like that. When you know the heart of God, you go to God and say, Lord, I'm open. No agenda. What your will is, I'm open, Lord. Jesus went into prayer like that. Matthew chapter 26, he said, Lord, yes, I'm suffering. I'm in sorrow. I'm in grief. But Lord, not my will, Father. Your will be done. Your will be done. And that is the thing that openness, the delays in prayer, you know, is because of God's timing. Another delay in prayer is because of the enemy's spiritual battle, right? We are binding the spiritual dark forces in the heavenly places. So we don't know that. Example, one time Daniel was praying and he was praying and he prayed like, he prayed like one day, two days, three days, no reply. He was praying for the nation. He was praying for the people. He's praying for himself. He's fasting and praying. No reply. 21 days later, a reply comes. And you know what that person says? 21 days later, from the first day that you purpose to understand and to humble yourselves before God, your prayers were heard. I came because of your prayers. Next verse. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia opposed me for 21 days. So you see, there is a spiritual battle also when there is a delay in prayer. So delay in prayer is not just God's timing, but is also a spiritual battle. So my dear brothers and sisters, you know that there is a spiritual battle. There's a spiritual battle that's going on for you, for your family, you know, for, for, for your purpose. You know, everybody here, you know, God wants to use you. Each one of you here, 
God wants to use you as an instrument for his kingdom in a small way, in a medium way, in a large way, whatever it is. It's his plan. It's his, his, his idea. Let him do what he wants to do. But there are spiritual forces that oppose this work that God wants to do. The enemy might put you into a bondage. The enemy might keep you into believing a lie. The enemy might put you into a bad habit. The enemy might put you into a bad habit that you, whenever you touch the Bible only, you feel like, oh man, I don't want to touch the Bible because I'm so unholy. I, I can't come to God's presence because I'm unholy. And all that. So, so there is a spiritual battle. The last thing I will say and I'll close today is that the first prayer that you can pray, because there are sometimes, you know, prayers are not answered. Prayers are not answered because of unconfessed sins. There are unconfessed sins in our life. You know, prayer cannot be answered. So the very, if you have not, if you, have, if you don't have a personal prayer life, or if you have not tried praying, you know, because you felt like it is, belongs to your parents or something, the first prayer, dear brothers and sisters, that you can pray is, have mercy on me, O Lord, a sinner. That's the first prayer. And then comes every other prayer. So if you have not started a prayer life, you know, if you are still struggling in your prayer life, you know, if there is some unconfessed sin in your life, you know, you just go to God and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And that's the thing, dear brothers and sisters. You know, the, only the sin that, that takes away, you know, it takes away, you know, the pr prayers, you know, not being answered. So if you are here today and, and, and if you want to confess something, it's say, God, and you know, we'll have a time of prayer for that. You know, we'll uh, God, ask God to, you know, set us free from whatever it is. James chapter 2 verse 2. Uh, James chapter 4 verse 2. Another reason why prayers are not answered. James chapter 4 verse 2. You desire and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. And then the last part only. You do not have because you do not ask. There is this passage in Luke chapter 11, I think, you know, where Jesus says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and it will be open to you. That is prayer. Many people have taken that to ask anything that they want. And actually, if you read that whole passage, Jesus says, what is he asking for? What to ask, seek and knock? Come on. Adi Kara. No. Ask for the Holy Spirit. That prayer, when God says, when Jesus says, ask, seek and knock, it is not for your own things. It is for the Holy Spirit. You can read later, Luke chapter 11. Ask for the Holy Spirit. And so when you go to God in prayer, you know, if you want to start a prayer life, you know, if you want to have that thing, ask God in the morning, Lord, fill me with your spirit today. There are other spirits. There are certain things that distract me. The spirit of irritation, the spirit of anger, the spirit of lust and the spirit of all these things. Lord, help me to gain the spirit of love. Help me to gain the spirit of self-control. Help me to gain the spirit of joy in my life. And so that is the thing. The only prayer that we can all pray, other than the, after the first prayer we said, have mercy on me, O Lord, the sinner. You can say, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Fill me today. Fill me with your joy. Fill me with your love. Fill me, fill me with your compassion. Give me your eyes to me. Give me your heart, Lord. Give me your hands. Give me your legs. Lord, let my body be your instrument, Lord. Let my body parts be your instrument. There was a time, dear brothers and sisters, I was doing Satan's will. Whatever he said, I used to do. Whatever his, his plots were, and I used to go there. I used to do all that. So now, not today. Not anymore. I am God's child. There were times that I used to serve the enemy because I was fulfilling Satan's will on my life. But now, here I am in prayer, through prayer, each one of us fulfilling God's desire. So you go to God in prayer. You ask Him to speak to you and reveal His things to you. There are a few more points, you know, that I don't have to cover. I'll probably send it to you by message, you know, personal message. And, you know, how you can grow in prayer. You know, I'll just quickly say, you know, I mean, it's, it's, we are out of time, you know, so, so we don't have. But what I want to tell you, dear brothers and sisters, you know, young people, young boys, young girls, you know, if you, if you have neglected prayer, if you become distracted in prayer, you know, go to a place in your home. Go to your place in your home. Set aside a time and a place in your home. Like Jesus did. Mark chapter 1 verse 35. You know, he set aside a time. He set aside a place 
so that he can pray because he didn't want to be distracted because he knew you know actually the funny thing is mark chapter 1 was 35 jesus does like this you know what happens in mark chapter 1 was 36 peter comes looking for jesus lord where are you people are looking you need to come and do this if jesus were praying in the house what would have happened An easy distraction peter would have immediately stopped jesus from praying so have a time of 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 thing and 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 uh, time to pray and 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 to spend time with god you know if you if you don't know how to pray have you talked to your dad or you know you could you could even like st- start reading some scripture and start to pray what god is telling you through those scripture george muller you know he used to pray first 10 years you know he used to wake up in the morning and pray he used to get distracted he said his mind is starting to wander and all that and then he said i changed my prayer habit to read god's word first on my knees and then start to pray and then he said like all my distractions got away because i got into my my heart is plowed is soft now so i can hear god's word so so there are many ways you know i i'll, I'll share some practical things you know later but when you go to god you know god is there you know you are a temple you are the you are a temple of the holy spirit you are the temple and what comes from a temple is always burning the old testament temple it's always the flame is burning burning so so you are always praying so so you you might be struggling today you might be like you know confused with prayer you might be distracted in prayer keep praying through you know keep praying through you know keep asking lord give me a spirit of prayer and 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 look at this verse i'll say you know come like you know come call unto me and i will answer you and i will show you great and wondrous things that you have not yet known amen but that god will do to you god will tell you how to pray god will teach you how to pray god will show you what to pray for god will show you you know what you need to do god will show you how you need to talk to your family member or your, or take a decision in your life god will show you everything dear brothers and sisters because why i am saying this so confidently because i am using god's word because he said call unto me he said call unto me when you are in trouble and i will rescue you and you will honor me psalm 50 verse 15 you know so god's saying hey come on my children call to me seek me come to me and you try me and test me so today i am telling you as a challenge if you have not prayed before test god in prayer when i say test god not in a negative way but like you know go to god and see your life change go to god and see you change go to god and see your situation change and god's going to do that and so i pray that that as you as you spend time more with god you know god's going to um just show you great and wondrous things i don't know what god shown me is great and wondrous things and god god's going to show you is great and wondrous things that you don't know that i don't know and that's what god's going to do it and so we'll ask god to give, put upon us a spirit of prayer that we will not neglect that we will not become tired and weary because we prayed and we have given up on prayer that god will speak to each one of us and that we will see great and wondrous things that god wants to show let's pray heavenly father lord we pray lord this morning we pray for all of us lord as a church family lord we need to have a spirit of prayer lord lord we look at your son jesus lord we look at him lord we look at his life morning till evening lord we see his life lord we follow him and lord we follow his example of prayer that he set for us lord lord we look at jesus in the garden of gethsemane lord we thank you lord for that example of even though our spirit is willing but our flesh is many times weak lord i would lead us lord lord some of us, some of us here lord are not praying people lord till make us people of prayer lord take away lord distractions in our lives lord take away lord that neglect of prayer lord lord i pray lord that you would touch us that you would pour out a spirit of prayer upon us lord that we would come intimately lord as we come to a father that our spirits would be joined with your spirit lord lord some of us here lord today morning lord we are praying people but we get discouraged and we get distracted lord lord i pray lord that we would be alert in prayer lord as we says in colossians lord that we would be devoted to prayer as it lord says in ephesians chapter 6 lord that we would be praying always in the spirit lord pour out lord the spirit of prayer upon us lord for people who are lord praying for others lord lord i pray lord that you would lord continue to embolden them that lord you would keep the altar burning lord of prayer 
that the fire is burning brighter and brighter each day Lord that the prayers are being given the aroma is being raised each day Lord Lord we pray Lord that you would touch each one of us today Lord wherever we are Lord you would touch us Lord anybody here Lord today who's suffering Lord some of us are suffering Lord because the prayer the answer is not coming there's a delay Lord help us Lord to open our eyes Lord to know that your timing is different from our timing as far as the heavens are as far as the heavens and the earth are far away Lord that as your thoughts are different from us Lord Lord we pray Lord that your timing Lord your plan Lord will be done in our life Lord we open up ourselves to you Lord we open our hearts to you Lord we open our minds to you Lord we open up our everything to you Lord we submit before you we humble ourselves before you Lord Lord we bow down before you Lord Lord we thank you that you are going to do great and mighty things we thank you Lord that when we call upon you that you will answer us that you will show great and wondrous things Lord I pray Lord that whatever the enemy is hindered Lord in any one of our brothers and sisters life I pray Lord in the name of Jesus we come against the enemy Lord by the victory of the cross we come against the enemy by the victory of Jesus Christ Lord Lord we ask Lord that you would bind the work of the enemy and cast it Lord we thank you Lord that you are going to do great and mighty things we humbly submit before you give us a spirit of prayer Lord as we leave from here today in Jesus mighty name I pray Amen